issues and um, things that you don't really want to look at and and have to see. And um, you know, that it was just confused. You know, you're just really confused. weren't sure what was really going on. And yeah, one of my really good friends is on that field coaching and was in that situation with a lot of other, you know, with those players and coaches and fans alike. So. Um, yeah, just you, you feel just your heart just hurts. And, um, you know, you, some of the news you're hearing now, like it just makes it a lot better uh, that you hear some of the positive things that are coming out of there. So, um, but you just you just feel awful because we, we've all played the game, but we're coaches, man. We don't really, you know, put our, put our bodies on the line ever. So uh, I think it puts a lot of perspective on what these guys truly do uh, week in and week out. Yeah. In terms of the season for now, I think to, for us to play, you know, a little bit more like, you know, we've shown to be able to play when we play at a high level. I mean, we, we struggled a little bit last week in some instances, but there was also some really good things that came off of that tape. You see Cam Akers again, you know, continuing to build off of the success that he's had. Saw so Bryson Hopkins, another guy that's just continuing to make plays with some of the opportunities. That's really what it, it, it is fun to watch. The, the win is great, but like you had that loss last week, and as disappointing as that result is, um, when you watch the film the next day, you can't help but um, get excited and, and feel proud and feel happy for the guys that have been able to step up, make plays, make the best out of their opportunities. Um, Cause that's really what is the joy of coaching is being able to see these guys be able to develop and, and execute, but also have fun doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> the confidence continues to grow as he continues to get healthier and healthier and more confident in his body, but also um, with the offense. I mean, he didn't hear a lot of the ball plays for a little while there while he was rehabbing. And a lot of these things are just starting to really come back to fruition for him. Um, Van's one of my favorite guys on the team. I mean, he worked very closely with him and um, he's, he can't help but be really happy for the type of guys that are having success um, like he is um, being the human beings that they are. I mean, he's, he's an unbelievable person, father, friend. I mean, he's just uh, – he lights up the room when he walks in. He's just the type of guy that you want to surround yourself with. Um, so I, I couldn't be more excited for Van uh, and really that crew as is, is, is a whole um, because they're just continuing to make the most out of their ops, and you see their, their improvement. Like that was the thing that you saw last week about some of the uh, struggles that we had. You still, I, I believe we're improving. I still believe that we're improving, uh, and that's really exciting to see. Did you see that training three confidence from Cam? Yes, hundred <clears> percent. <throat> As I've kind of mentioned, um, you know, his detail without the ball, you know, it, everything's great when you know when he has the ball in his hands. And he's starting to do some of the things that he's done that he's shown at a high level that he's been able to do in the past. Take that out of him. I mean, this, this is unbelievable to see him uh, take his game and elevate it the way he has. And whether that's repetitions, whether that's focus, whether that's um, health, whether that's all these things, I really don't know exactly what has led to Cam having the success that he's had. I just know that Around the building, when you see Cam, when you're around him, you just see a little bit of a different look in his eye. The focus, the concentration, the confidence that he's been able to almost walk around the building with. And, and uh, he's a quiet by nature dude, but um, smiling a lot again. And I think a lot of that comes with confidence. Um, success helps, but the confidence that you've seen out of Cam. But his detail without the football has been you know, tremendous. And then you know, it's gotten to the point now, you feel like when we hand the football off, we're, we're going to get some yards. You feel confident when we're handing the ball off, and he's making seven or eight out of nothing sometimes. Speaking of that detail about the ball, what did you think of his uh, pancake blocking? 
man, I mean, it's uh, he's doing such a nice. Like we've seen that out of him before. He had one on Buda Baker, actually, you know, earlier in the season on a blitz pickup. Um, you know that he has that in him. You know, and and he's strong. He's explosive. But it was more the finish. You know, I mean, he he got it, his job done. Baker slid off the spot a little bit, and then he just continued to go. And it wasn't dirty or malicious. It was just. Uh, the finish. We always talk about effort, strain, burst, and finish, and uh, that's something that you saw in that one rep uh, completely all come together. Yeah. If if we if we can build off of that momentum, you know, you'd almost love for for Candlick the season to continue, because just to see what it could be. Uh, for him specifically to build off of this. But you can't help but have confidence, I think, if you're looking at some of the pieces that are coming back and having you know, a run game be able to really come together. Um, you know, the run game, we all know it takes all 11. But when the back is doing special things, it makes it a lot better. Uh, you can't always block the looks perfectly. You're not always going to run into clean looks. Um, and I think for a long time, as coaches, you feel like you need to put these guys in every single position possible to be, you know, to be successful. Whereas the way he's running right now, um, you're able to maybe call and run some more things and kind of just let him, hey, well, somebody's free. He's going to make you miss. Um, that's football, too. So one-on-ones, winning one-on-one you know, matchups. And he's giving, giving us that right now. And hopefully that continues to lead on to the offseason with some of the other guys coming back as well. Yeah. You're more, you're, you're truly more equipped, right, to handle difficult situations, personnel changes, the injuries, all those things. You're just, you're more equipped as a coaching staff, but you're also a little bit more equipped as a player. You know, I think there's some things that, um, you know, when other guys have to play that you don't have a ton of chemistry with and camaraderie with and all those things, um, we'll just give them the opportunity sometimes, right? Like some of the opportunity balls that we've been able to kind of get off, it's, um, you know, those are, and seeing the guys make some of those plays, I think it gives, you know, the likes of Matthew and some of these guys confidence that, well, maybe I didn't throw that ball to Ben Skoranek a million times in practice to get that chemistry uh, like we might on a lot of other plays. Um, but it's just the opportunities that you can present to the guys that it's just next man up mentality. But um, it prepares you to be able to handle some of the difficult situations. But also, I think for some of these guys that are getting these reps and opportunities, it's only building depth. It's only building depth and in, in, in competition. And I think the quarterback, you know, Matthew being around it all to be able to see these things is great for him. On a little different note, we got the CFP championship game coming up here. So yeah. Around. Um, I would say the level, the, the difference, I mean, I think that we've had some pretty solid crowds, but they haven't really, a lot of them been for us, but the place has been rocking, right? It's been a great, it's a great place to watch a game and to be a part of. Um, I think that that's going to really show itself. The city, the area is going to be, you know, pretty cool for people to come in and, and, and be around because I'll be honest, there isn't better places than, you know, a college campus on a Saturday, you know, on a weekend. I mean, there, there's, it's a really cool place to be. And uh, the fans, the tailgating, it's just a little bit different, I would say, than the NFL. Um, you know, this is entertainment. This is a game. But uh, there's a little bit of a different vibe and feel when you are around a college campus for a big day college game day. Um, but also, you know, from an offensive standpoint, um, I would say the National Football League has, it, it, to me, it's the fronts. The fronts and the defense on the second level, first and second level of the defenses in the National Football League are completely different. 
Um, you know, a lot of these guys are obviously coming from they're coming from the college ranks, but each team in the National Football League, I believe, is just built differently from the front seven, specifically on the defense. And that's where you can see like these spread offenses, but also just like likes of TCU beating Michigan doing it the way they did. Um, you can see when you put guys in space that really don't want to be in space all that often, um, it creates a lot of conflict. The hash difference, you know, to be able to use the field that w the way you can in the college game. Uh, but to me, it's the fronts that are a huge. The skilled players are, you know, you got one-on-one -on -one matchups, all those things are uh, across the board. But the pass rush in the National Football League and known passing situations versus college, um, I'd say it's night and day. Have not made a decision quite yet. Um, you know, the focus obviously has been um, to, to truly put everything into this and this opportunity to be around these guys. I mean, there's so many of these guys that I'm, I'm not only you know, they're, I'm coaching them or their players. I'm really close with them as friends and uh, also the staff. So it's going to take the next couple of days after the game to, to think it through, talk through, you know, talk through with my family, uh, my wife Ashley, and kind of make a decision that's best for us. And um, you know. Definitely not never easy, but you know, that's kind of this world is you get opportunities, you have to weigh and decide the pros and cons, make your lists and figure out what's best for you and your family. And, um, you know, but it's uh, the, the focus is here for sure. And we'll, we'll definitely come up with that in the next you know, few days. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys. Morning, guys. What was your initial reaction to watching what happened with Demar Hamlin? Oh, fear. You know, um, um, immediate, um, you know, prayer and hope that everything was okay. Um, but also, uh, watching the guys handle it, talking about Sean and. Um, and Zach, I, I thought they handled it with the utmost class, and I was really a little prideful of how my colleagues and uh, people that you work with and people that you know handled that situation with, with uh, the care that they did, recognizing immediately that it wasn't a normal injury and, and handling it how you wanted to handle it. And I thought that was outstanding. I thought that was awesome, um, the way that was handled. Just the two coaches coming together. You rarely see that in our profession. Um, we grow um, way too easy and comfortable with injury and watching people leave and then continue to do what we do, but to watch those guys get together and figure out what was best for the team, um, was, what was best for their guys, what was best needed for each other, um, I thought was absolutely outstanding. You know, I think it's, um, I think it's important um, to bring up um, things that are happening, especially when they affect the players and they affect the coaches the way that they potentially can. Um, when you're talking about anything, it's only happened a couple times when I've been in the National Football League. Social justice a couple of years ago um, when I was in Atlanta and Dan Quinn had to run one of those type of meetings. COVID, you know, obviously the last couple of years, when, whether you're being here, whether you're being away.
and how you want to handle it with your family and people you care about. And then something that happens directly on a football field that nobody's accustomed to seeing, um, those are other times you just want to give people opportunity to get their feelings out, to talk about it, um, to let them know that there's people there, you know, obviously if they need something. Um, there's a lot of people on our team that, that know Hamlin. There's a lot of people on our team that uh, can relate to Hamlin, and all of them really, and like because of how normal the play was, you know, um, and even our coaches. I talked to our coaches the other day. I said it was so normal um, on what both happened by T and Hamlin that you've seen every day that you coach, whether you're on offense, being on offense, teaching a drop step, or whether you're on defense, teaching a tackle. You know, it was just such a normal play that everybody had something to say or feeling, and it's got to be put out there and given the opportunity to have some type of a voice and speak about it. And I think when he came in this building, that was one of the first things we did by Sean, and I thought it was outstanding. I thought it was excellent just because you give those guys a chance to speak, talk, go through their emotions, and put the human element first. Ricky, Bobby Wagner going back to Seattle uh, play for the first time. What, um, what do you anticipate his emotion will be, and do you talk to him at all about playing in that environment? I don't. You know, um, Bobby's pretty, as we all know now, kind of reserved. You know, he's kind of to himself. He's uh, he's a real prideful, passionate, um, intentful, um, eloquent um, type of player. So when he comes to work, he's going to work. And will it mean some more to him? I, you know, there's no doubt. There's only the human element of that, that the way he played the first time we played him, the way he's played all throughout the season, um, his pride and his passion that he brings to every single game is just unparalleled to a lot of people. And and I, I – um, I want to go up there and get a win for him. I'm going to flat out just say it, you know, for him and for his teammates and for the guys that wanted to play so hard for him the last time and just to be able to do that for Bobby because of Bobby, you know, like all the things that he's given us. Let's go give him something back. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> I talk about every week, but, you know, you just get so numb to him getting 100 tackles a year. Um, I believe this year is – I don't want to misquote. Yeah, 126 tackles. I, I, I mean, interceptions, maybe two. Um, I think he's got six sacks. Um, his year has been, you know, just awesome. And the, and then you can't even go beyond that because of what he does for the team and his voice and the recognition that he has with everybody else around him. You know, our time at breakfast. I mean, it's it's a he's an outstanding human to be around. I'm glad I had a chance to coach him this year and be around that type of a human. You know, I could only compare it to the likes of Derek Brooks when when I was lucky enough to be around him as a very young coach and the, the impact that he had on the team because he was the voice of everybody. He was the voice for everybody. He was the voice to the people, you know, so to speak. Within the locker room, to the coaches, it didn't matter. He did his in the sauna. Bobby does his at the breakfast table. It was uh, very parallel and the same position and that type of leadership, when you get that type of stuff, is really special. You don't want to uh, leave out London Fletcher either, but that position and those type of guys that really remind me of those type of figures and they're just special people. I think um, we've seen Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup on the sidelines during games. I could be mistaken, but I don't know that we've seen Aaron. And I'm just wondering, if, has he been there? And if not, why has he not been there? Well, I sent him last yesterday. You know, he uh, <laughs> beat me up pretty good in the hallway. Um, he's in good spirits. Um, you know, Aaron's kind of to himself, and as we always know, you know, um, Aaron's no different than what Aaron is out there now than what he is for when he is playing. You know, he's usually pretty quiet. He's usually pretty reserved. Uh, we brought something out of him different last year when we went on that run. But, you know, um, Aaron's one of those guys who works in silence. Um, he sneaks in the office. He talks with his coaches. He does his deal. He talks with his guys. Um, he doesn't want to be the center of attention a lot of time, not to say that Cooper and Cup and Matthew Stafford do, but um, they're more um, probably ready for at a game and to do some of those things different than Aaron, you know. Um, Aaron might get in the field if he's out there. So it's probably, probably best that he's not. Hey, Raheem, um, as you kind of look at the season as a whole, and I know you guys are focused on what's coming up Sunday, but um, what are some points of improvement defensively that you uh, would really like to, to focus on? We got to get back to owning the run. You know, um, last week was one of the rare occurrences that we were able to give up some rush yards, you know, that big – 80 yard run or whatever it was, that's obviously going to get that out of whack. But we got to get back to just being able to be on the run. You know, it starts with our young guys up front, it goes with our fits on the second level, and it goes with our finishing the tackles on the third level. So it's just across the board of what we got to do. 
and it's got to be a mindset because that's a part of our philosophy of winning. That's part of our our uh, identity. That's a part of what we do. That's part of what we talk about first and foremost, you know, right from the beginning of our meetings, our sessions every single day. So we got to get back to those things. We got to get back to harnessing and stopping the run and do some of those things in this last game. Um, and then they get those guys back, go out there and play. Get out there, go out there and play fast, and that's what we want to do. From an overall evaluation standpoint, how do, you, how do you approach the final game of the season in terms of you know, the younger guys, the scheme, anything like that? You know, it was really funny. I, don't, I, I never really realized it's the final game of the season. You know, I mean, obviously, but you don't think about it that way. You know, for me, it's just about the constant improvement and the betterment of our defense, our team, um, what it takes to win the games, all the things that you talk about from a normal, normal day-to-day standpoint. So... Um, you can't put a measurement on that. I mean, the measurement of those things to me happen when you start your off-season evaluations, your studies and all those type of things. But we got places that we want to see the team grow. We've seen it grow over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've seen some drop-offs, up and down type of performances, and you want to see those things become more consistent. And if we can get those things to get to the consistent level, we can finally lose this season. And like I said, ultimately, at the end of the day, get this win for Bobby. Um, that would be something that we would all love to do. A couple more, yes. We asked about Baker Mayfield when you arrived. But yes. I've seen a guy come in and really fit in, you know, and um, when I mean fit in, I mean fit in with the culture, fit in with the competitive environment. You know, we've, as you guys know, we've done these Mamba periods. It's good on good periods. And those things have been as fun as they can get around here. We had the opportunity to get them because of guys like Baker and because of the guys competing, whether it's Jalen Ramsey or whether it's Bobby Wagner or whoever those names are that you know, bringing out the competitive nature of the Vans and all those type of guys. But it's been fun. So I've seen the guy fit in. I've seen the guy absolutely grasp the situation and go into the moment and try to win the moment and go out there and be his very best self. And I'm very proud of um, us being able to acclimate him into our system as quickly as possible to get those things going. Um, I just see a worker, you know. He's not done anything out of the ordinary. He's just came and gone to work, and that's really positive things for us. Covering the Rose Bowl last weekend, and James Franklin told us that you got the chance out to watch the Yeah, sure. I'm you know. What you, what you see as a long time NFL coach, you have a college experience. What do you see when you look at the college game? What's different? What makes it hard? What makes it tight? I do try not to look at it that way, um, because of the the, the, the gruesome um, experience of looking at all these college tape and little what's going to come up when Les has to put me through that process. Um, I like it to be fresh. I try to look at it as a fan. I try to look at it as an enjoyment moment, and then you get with a guy like James Franklin, you're able to compare some notes and talk about some things and talk about what happened during the season and how it was going on and. Really getting a chance to catch up with an old friend is, um, is something that I enjoy. So when you watch it as a fan right now, it becomes a lot of fun. Um, I can't wait to see the national championship. It's really fun watching it with you guys, you know, whether it be the night before games or whether the case may be, um, to see the excitement, the pride that these guys have in their schools, to see the um, everybody else around that's either a hater or, or a person that's cheering for those guys. Um, it really brings some team camaraderie together. That's really fun and awesome. Uh, last one, yes. Sure. Um, teams were really only, it felt like there was only one way teams could move the ball on you, and that was to throw a quick it. game, getting the ball out extremely fast to mitigate the pass rush, and then find some <clears throat> voids in the zone that you guys play. When you look at some of the patterns that um, that those that established in, in, for certain quarterbacks, um, especially in the middle of the season, is there anything that you guys can troubleshoot um, to problem solve even when teams are so limited in what they can do against you in other ways? I'm going to try to answer that without giving away game plan type <laughs> secrets because that's a really detailed question, Jordan, as you always do. But um, shorten it up as much as possible. We got to get back to getting people in the box, knowing their fits, making their hits, and controlling the line of scrimmage. And if we can get back to doing those things, um, we'll have a chance to get back to getting that steady improvement, that consistency um, that you want to take into the following seasons. And if we can do those things with these young guys and gain that kind of confidence that they can do those things, that allows you to get to the stuff that really makes winners and really makes the winning edge that we have and we've had here for a while. Um, I got so much confidence in these young guys that they're able to do that. Um, they played some really good competitors down the stretch. They led a Chargers team and that running back special. Um, I think they've done some really good things versus the Raiders, who I think had a special running game when we played them. Um, but we can get back and even be better. And these are great tests for these young men. And I look forward to, I look forward to those challenges. Have a good one, guys.